Would it be equivalent to stop giving my money to interest-based banks to give my money to the Islamic part of a uh, regular bank, example, HSBC Amana's? Um, we support HSBC Amana because uh, having spoken to their scholars, uh, we understand that the funds in HSBC Amana are kept separate from the funds in uh, HSBC Conventional. So in that case, your funds would not uh, benefit the interest-based system. Obviously, uh, to the extent possible, try to support uh, full-fledged Islamic financial institutions to support the industry. But uh, to answer your specific question, Zainab, uh, HSBC Amana would be something that uh, the, the Fukuhawa we spoke to uh, support. Well, okay, here's a question. What's the difference between Marabah and interest? Um, and that is relevant to our discussion because we did touch on it. Um, the difference is, as we saw, uh, commercial interest today is not simple interest, it's compounded interest. Uh, you'll be lucky if you get a simple interest loan from any bank. Compounded interest compounds. So they will reschedule, they will revolve, they will, they will do a number of things. In a Marabaha, uh, what we discussed earlier about tying a, tr a transaction to a particular asset or service, creates a bottleneck. And, and with a Marabha, you can't do a Marabha on a service, but you can do it on a particular asset. So in a Marabha, um, the bank goes out and purchases a particular asset and sells it to the, uh, to the customer and then finances it over time as part of installments. And it was, it's used, uh, it's become very common, unfortunately, because it's a uh, it, it, unfortunately, because it's muscled aside equity-based transactions, um, not unfortunately because it's impermissible. The AO fee and the, there's IJMA that it's it's something that is permissible. But uh, in terms of uh, it uh, being the better alternative to interest, uh, there is a purchase of a particular asset, and when a bank is forced to purchase an asset, uh, it is confined confined to one transaction is confined to using that those funds for that one transaction as confined to that one customer. So for the duration of that transaction, that asset is tied to that one, one customer and that one transaction. With interest, concurrently, you can take through what uh, Yusuf has touched on, uh, fractional reserve banking, you can lend uh, to many people at once uh, using the same cash and sometimes without even lending the cash, you know, so numbers on the computer. So in this case, it is something quite different. And the results, as we saw, we saw $100 uh, million in our example turn into $110 million for a Marabaha, or let's say there's a 20% markup, $120 million. But with the interest, at half the, half the rate, at 5% only, $100 million in 20 years became $265 million. Okay, um, somebody is asking us to comment on particular transactions, which we will not do, obviously, because that requires and entails a complete Sharia review. Um, and uh, for those of you who want a detailing of Murabaha, you can look at our Murabaha training module, uh, which, which goes through in, in extenso. Um, what in the case of an Ajara mortgage agreement, if the we call it an Ajara, not an Ajara mortgage agreement, an Ajara, if the value of the property depreciates and the lessee doesn't pay as he is not financially self-sufficient? Again, this is specific to the transaction. Um, if uh, the value depreciates, the owner in an Ajara is the lessor, not the lessee. So the 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 transaction is 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 the, the least. Uh, asset is is owned by the lessor, and what he pays for, the lessee uh, pays for, is the usufruct, the right to use that asset for a particular given duration. Okay, so it says here, how do you see ISDB's role as an institution, which is supposed to foster I ISDB, or, or or do you mean something else? I think you might mean, yeah, the IDB. Uh, but how do you see the IDB, uh, which we assume you're saying, because we don't know what ISDB is, but how do you see the IDB's role as an institution which is supposed to foster the economic development and social progress? Uh, yeah, he's corrected, Rafiq, thank you. Uh, the IDB's role as an institution uh, which is supposed to foster the economic development and social progress of Muslim communities within the principles of Sharia, and the answer, we believe, is 
it's central. We believe the IDB's role is central. So that's <laughs> that's the short answer. What about things like student loans where the interest is held off? Supposing it is paid off before interest is occurred. Um, no, it's not permissible because you're entering into a transaction that is in and of itself impermissible. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's an invalid transaction whether you pay it off now or later. So that's what the Fukuha that we've spoken to have said. Um, I am confused as to whether time value of money is or is not accepted in Islamic banking, uh, Muhammad asks. And the answer is, this is actually a very long answer, but we'll, we'll, we'll provide a very short uh, answer and then we can go offline to give you more uh, a full answer. And the answer is that time value of money is, not something, is, 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 a, is a human reality. Um, everybody wants a certain amount of money now rather than later. So that's a human reality that we uh, don't deny exists. People want $100 today than in 50 years. So that's a reality. Um, whether we can charge for the provision of cash over that time uh, is a different question. And the answer to that is no, we cannot. That's interest. Charging cash for cash over a per certain amount of time so for more cash later uh, than for amount of cash given now. That's something that's not permissible. But if you, for instance, say to somebody that uh, you can have this transaction, you can have this car now for $10,000, or you can enter into this transaction uh, in which we will provide you with money and you can buy the car, you can, we provide you with the car and you can pay us back. And that paying us back will be over a period of installments of let's say five years and you're paid um, an amount larger than 10000 That's something that is permissible because there is a particular asset. Again, I'm compressing and simplifying, but I hope that answers your question. Yusuf's going to answer this question from... from uh, okay. The question, uh, based on your presentation, that Islamic finance provides a better solution in environmental preservation, but apparently in business and Sharia decisions, this aspect Always being is always being neglected compared to conventional ethical finance and investment. Your comment, please. Okay, I think the presentation, I haven't caught most of it, um, but I think the presentation has more been speaking in terms of what Islamic finance should be. Uh, in terms of what Islamic finance is, uh, we, we can go to a whole set of questions and, and, and discussion about it, but even in terms of the the current climate of Islamic finance, if we look at the uh, social responsible investment sector, which is considered the green sector or the ethical, conventional ethical finance sector, they usually adopt what they call uh, screens based on um, you know, environmental issues and so on. Um, and we can find that when uh, the similar screens existing within the Islamic finance industry uh, when it comes to investing uh, in certain companies and certain things that are harmful to people. But we also find an additional screen, um, and that is a financial uh, screening, uh, uh, screening based on companies that involve uh, get involved in excessive leverage, companies that may, uh, you know, their, their financials may not be ethical. And so in effect, what, you'd, what we'd say is that Islamic finance is sort of supra-ethical finance because it not only screens at the level of the business, but it screens at the level of the use of the finance. And if there's anything I hope uh, we've taken from this, it is that, you know, we can go out and we can make sure we're recycling. We can go out and we can make sure we're doing our little things. And, and as Atif touched upon, we should do. But there is a huge, huge paradigm, a huge model that is taking us down a path. And it's generating a lot of momentum. And that momentum is leading us to crash against civilization as you know it. And that momentum is being generated by the debt-based interest financial system. So any social responsible, green, ethical investment that doesn't take into account interest has basically, uh, from that perspective, or the economic system, is not looking at it accurately. And, and, and to be fair to the social responsible investment spectrum, we will find that um, uh, this is something that has been picking up. This is something that's been touched upon by various people. We alluded to James Gustav uh, uh, Seth a Speth a while ago. This was something that was alluded to by people like E.F. Schumacher uh, years ago when he when somebody asked him what's the solution, he said plant a tree. And uh, and the point being that any and he was a, a really noted economist. He was a contemporary of Keynes. And so the point being that any real solution has to look at the model of economics that we have. 
stuff and uh, alongside our personal thing and so if, uh, just to add on to the various suggestions that Artif gave I think you should all I think anyone listening to this should try and understand the nature of fraction reserve banking understand why interest is prohibited and then join uh, you know cross denominational movements there's there's for example there's a website uh, there's a uh, called positive money there are movements there was a, recently a bill against fractional reserve banking was passed in the house of lords uh, by an mp there uh, and there was recently the, uh, you know there there are all sorts of movements uh, across people who are not muslim who are, have realized that the issues that are affecting us are systemic and they are caused by the nature of banking as we know it and so um, We've got something to add, we believe, as Muslims that, that is relevant to everyone. And uh, any ethical solution has to take that into account. Thank you, Yusuf. Okay, alhamdulillah, it's been a great uh, hour and uh, 12 minutes. Uh, we've tried to uh, answer some of your questions. We are available to answer more of your questions on Facebook. You can catch us at www.facebook.com forward slash Ethica Institute. That's E-T-H-I-C-A Institute. Um, I would like to close uh, with a special thank you to everybody who came. Alhamdulillah, usually uh, people uh, start leaving within the first few minutes, but uh, we managed to keep everyone uh, uh, you know, participating throughout. And uh, for that, uh, we're, what we're going to do is make uh, the entire uh, presentation uh, with the recording and the slides available to you shortly. Just stay tuned on Facebook. And also, um, please uh, look out and stay tuned for what we're calling the Ethica uh, Community Learning Packet, which will include uh, many things that, uh, that will enable you as individuals to go out into your communities and provide uh, people with more knowledge about Islamic finance. This will include speeches, uh, FAQs with scripts that you can use to... Uh, answer questions. Uh, it will include uh, module presentations. It will include all kinds of things. Uh, so inshallah, uh, we hope uh, to continue to serve you in our own meager way. Uh, please make dua for us. We're, you know, inshallah, uh, we're, we're just learning as we go along and uh, we, we thank you again for your time.